back with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee, and Shanola Hampton is here. We just had a whole conversation, yeah. and she's like, wait, we wasn't, are we rolling? Are we, I was just talking. <laughs> I thought we were doing, because you were so good at a conversation. No, that was you. You came in here like, bam, I'm in the room <laughs> singing. You made a theme song for me. Yeah. Thank you. Way up, I'm going to way up. Yeah. All right. Don't sue us later when we start playing. Oh, that. oh I won't, beat, honey. I don't do that. Under it. <laughs> <laughs> but you did. You did Broadway before, right? Did no, you that was actually my dream. Honestly, that's what I thought I was going to do mm -hmm. when I went and I got my master's of fine arts from the University of Illinois. So I was outside of Chicago area, and what I thought all my life is I was going to be a Broadway actress. And then my dad, who's very big on education, was like, "You have to go and learn all the things." I did an internship in L.A. Mm -hmm. at a casting office. Got my first job got Taft Hartley which put me in the union and then I realized that Spirit was saying nope you're not going to New York you need to go to LA because the doors just started opening in right. it worked out quite well and I still have not made it to Broadway yet but holla at me I just say because I, I don't see how <laughs> but it's going to happen thank you yeah I believe thank it's going really to go to plays do I do I love I love I wasn't able this trip to go to a show but I'm coming back next week and I'm going to a show next week okay Um, but I have my, my mama who was on Shameless Vanessa Bell Calloway is in a show right now mm -hmm. I wanted to see her Monday night but they're dark but yeah I love of theater. I could tell because you are very definitely um... since I was five. <laughs> Well, let's talk about the show found because that's what we're here for. Mm -hmm. And I actually did get to watch um, the first eight episodes. Yes. Uh, you know, so I didn't last night. I didn't see it because I was unfortunately working all night and I was exhausted by the time I came home. Absolutely. Um, but you know, the show is fascinating. I have a million questions okay. because as I'm watching it, I'm thinking of like different things. Yes. Right now, clearly at the center of this show because we keep on finding new things out about your character. But found is about making sure that people who have gone missing are found. That's right. Right? And sometimes... And underserved communities. Yes, and mm -hmm. underserved communities. Mm -hmm. And each episode definitely focuses on an underserved community. It's not just children either. No. Mm -hmm. Right, right. It's not just children, it's, it's people of color, it is sex workers, unhoused, indigenous. All those stories that we have not seen on our TV screens mm -hmm. or in our media in real life, those are the people that we are looking to find because there has been such a gap in the representation when someone goes missing. At the same time, two people can go missing the same week and only one person gets a, a lot of the media attention yes. or a hashtag and everybody knows the name in the face of that missing person but there's still another young lady same age different color and the media attention is not there so this show really tries to not only bring that to light but also says that every missing person deserves to be found it's it's such a good story i think throughout in the procedural aspect it's the first time we've seen Mm -hmm. anybody looking for this specifically. Yeah, and that definitely plays out on um, one of the episodes where there's the missing white girl, which, you know, God willing, we always want the children who are missing to come home and get found, but it gets so much more attention. Right. You get the Amber Alerts. Yep. And then if a young black kid goes missing, you don't get that same type of focus. Sometimes they also feel like, oh, that they ran away. They ran away. Oh, they were a bad kid. Yeah. And yeah. And that's what. And and I think that that's been such a misrepresentation of so many communities is that they, it's so easy to throw away those. Uh, someone who is unhoused or someone who is a person of color. And that's what we want to do. We want to change the face of the missing for everyone. That's right. what this show is really about. And when you see that, and I think that what we want to also always understand, and you said it best, be careful of is we're not saying don't look for them. Right. We're saying look for us too. Yeah. And look for the indigenous too. And look for the sex worker too. And look for the unhoused too. Like look for everybody. People, we got to add that to to everything apparently because mm -hmm. if right. not, then it becomes, this is not a. It's not a, this a, or that. That. It's, it's this and, and that. that. Yeah. That's right. All of us. Exactly. All of us. That's it. And you're also a producer yes. on the series. So how did that happen? Because this was brought to you as like, you'd be perfect for this role, mm -hmm. right? Did you have to audition for it? Or was oh, it... no, no. I don't audition anymore. Okay. No, no, no. Okay, no, okay, no, no Thank you, Lord. <laughs> I paid my tithe in. Um, but no, um, what happened was... Um, our showrunner, N.K. Carroll, she and I were meeting. I was meeting to go direct on one of her other shows. She has three shows on the air right now, mm -hmm. All-American, Homecoming, and Now Found. Amazing So ones. this is doing great things, and she's a great person. And we were just meeting, talking, because my hustle 
as an actor has changed. It's not as much of a hustle, but my hustle as a director is back at the grind. Okay. And so I'm taking meetings and I was talking to her about directing on one of her shows and she was looking at me and apparently now, I didn't know this then, she was texting as we were taking this meeting saying I found my Gabby. <laughs> so towards the end of the meeting, she says to me, uh, are you still acting? I said, um, yes, ma'am, I still have to pay bills. So I'm <laughs> still acting. And she said, I think I have a script for you. Okay. So it all happened from a meeting that was about something else. And one of the things that I knew moving forward from doing Shameless for so long is I was never going to be just an actor for hire again. Mm -hmm. I wanted to yes. put my thumbprint in as a producer and be sort of, not sort of, but be part of the process as a boss. And that was what I set, was determined to do. So anyone that wasn't going to accept that and my role wasn't going to be a place that I wanted to partner with. And of course, NK and Great Berlancy and the folks at NBC have been so good and Warner Brothers. So that's why, and I'm a producer on it, but not just to hyphenate. I think sometimes people hyphenate for hyphenated sake. Mm -hmm. that it's because if I want if I have something to say, right. I want to be able to say it. Right. And I don't speak when I don't need to speak. I don't have to prove that I'm the boss. You Isn't know? it nice to think about how far like things have progressed from when you know you first started? Look at where you are now. Yeah. Like yeah. not having, you don't have to audition. Yeah. You're producing, you know, major shows, and you're in demand. It's just crazy, like to think about where you are. Like when you first got started, you got married at a young age. Too. I did. Yeah, you've been married for what you said twenty, almost twenty four years. Twenty four years in March. Yes, to a wonderful Congratulations. man. Thank you. But I'm Southern, so it kind of makes sense. Yeah, I'm from York. South we're Carolina. Like <laughs> yeah, in South Carolina, you got to get out of high school. You get married. I'm just kidding, Southerners. I I know, but no, but yeah, it is because I'm just a little dark skin girl from a small town now is a bigger town in South Carolina and I had a dream since I was five years old it was to be on stage but to be an actress this is what I always thought I was going to do so to do it and have been blessed in this way but let me just be clear because see here's what happens you see this and you think oh my gosh look at that it's so easy this is 20 some odd years in the making right. to get just to mm -hmm. this level by the time I got uh, shameless, which is the thing that really yeah, changed my life. Exactly. But mm -hmm. I'd already been in Los Angeles for 10 years. Right. So it's the perseverance is you gotta, you gotta push through all of this stuff and all of the tears. There's a lot of tears in the car, a lot of tears in the closet, you know, that throwing up tears where you throw up because she's so upset, those things. And, and so, uh, and then you get here and there's still, and there's still a hustle once you get here because you don't want to be complacent. Right. I mean, how, um, cause it seems like you're very pleasant to work with. Right, and that people. Maria, am I pleasant to work with? Absolutely. Amen. See, and, but I do think people don't understand the importance of that. Also, you know, yeah. just because yes, even for who you decide you want to work with, right? That we all have options, but we get yeah. to choose. If, when you get the chance to choose who you want yeah. to be around or who you want to be on set with, that does make a difference too with those types of relationships. Well, yeah, and we've said it before, and this was one of the things that when NK and I met, we always we leave with love. I don't start. We have a no jerk policy, and that <laughs> it's a for real no jerk I policy, and we. I don't start the day, everyone will tell you, because we gotta we get so caught up in our work that we forget that the humans that are behind the job that we're doing, everybody went home to a family, everybody had a night. So we don't start the day without me checking in with everybody on a human level first, mm -hmm. and now we can get to work. And right. we still make our day. It takes no time to say, how you doing? How'd you sleep? You all right? How's the baby? I know she was sick. You know, having those human interactions first, that's the kind of set, that environment that we've created and we're a family there right. and that's how it should be and it doesn't matter the wee hours of the morning or whatever let's go let's mm -hmm. ride let's get it get some coffee yeah let's go because <laughs> I always picture like in Hollywood when you first got started you know sometimes you're taking jobs and you may feel like hmm. yeah. <laughs> This isn't the most pleasant experience, but I got to just, you know, keep because you're trying to get somewhere, you know. Well, you yeah, know, it's funny because I, I remember some of the less pleasant experiences. And I remember looking at the folks that were being, for me, it felt so ungrateful for the opportunity they had. You know, you go on as a guest star, you're looking at these series regulars or you're looking at these people that are the main leads and you say, that would be all I would want. How are you not happy coming right. to work? How are you not full of joy mm -hmm. coming to work every day? And and how, and how even just going to speak to like people in the background and stuff, everyone has such a role in this, in this 
attitude of the, for lack of a better word, don't look at me or talk to me in between. It just was something that I cannot grasp is even to this day. It's about the human being first, and we're just doing a job. So why are you acting like that? Even for you getting into character on Found, because yeah. there are some dark elements to this show. There have to be some episodes that were hard for you to be able to to film and like have to take a moment. I saw now with the SAG after union, they also are gonna have people on set that help with certain things like intimacy even, yeah. right? To have those type of coordinators, things that never were yeah. considered requirements before yeah. moving forward. But even for you being on set and having to deal, I mean, you know, people going missing, um, the unhoused community, like you said, and having to film uh, certain scenes like that. Usually now, the first few episodes I've seen, and I'm not giving any spoilers because this show's been on, so yeah, y'all gotta exactly catch right. it. You know, I hate to like talk about it yeah. just in case somebody's listening and they haven't seen it and they're like, I want to go back and watch it, so I won't give too much. But one of the main things is you were, um, you know, as a child, you were taken. Yes. Right? And um, I was, here's what I was thinking, because I couldn't understand what the relationship was there because mm -hmm. it, it didn't seem like there was anything intimate mm -hmm. between right. the two of them. Good. Yeah, right? right. Because normally when we think that happens, there's like some type of like sexual, sexual assault mm -hmm. or something going on. But mm -hmm. I was trying, did he just want you to be like his child? I just couldn't understand yeah. what it was that Sir, is the, who's the person that abducted you, was trying to get from you. Yeah. And so when Gabby, my character, was abducted, you're going to see, so last night's episode, I don't want to spoil it for you, but you'll see where from when Sir came. So right. it's flashbacks. So you're going to, the, the, that episode kind of explains the psyche of Sir. But what's really fun about this, it is not sexual. Mm -hmm. So it makes it creepier right. and weirder. And everybody is like, well, what is it? It's some sort of obsession. The need for companionship, but not in a sexual way. The need for family, the need, all of those things. And you're going to see now that the season, as the season unfolds, how they even came to be, mm -hmm. how they met, what Sir was in her life prior to the abduction, right. which will open up all the things, the adoration he had for her brain, all of those that stuff, that's all going to be answered this season, okay, which good, I'm excited that was, about. That was yeah. one thing, because I, I was trying to see if maybe they're not showing that. I would, couldn't figure it out. And then even in one of the episodes, um, was it Lacey, uh -huh. that, who is a, a law student? She also was uh, somebody that was abducted by Sir. Yeah. Um, she was like, he just, all he cared about was you, and I came and ruined that dynamic. And, um, mm. you know, and then... Even in one scene, he wants you to tell him that you love him. Oh, no. And I was like, does she love him? Yeah. Like, yeah. I really am trying to, I'm like, is this a Stockholm Syndrome yeah. Yeah. type of situation? Because, and this is not giving away too much, but he is now your captive in the basement. Yeah. Um, you have him chained up. I have him chained up. But he doesn't want to leave anyway. And, and it took me a minute to realize that... Um, he could also go to jail. And so maybe he'd rather be in the basement than in jail. Yeah, but I don't, I don't think he worries about that, right? Because no one, they weren't able to catch him for all those years. So I, the jail. Because you could easily have just called the cops. And, you know, so he's going to be quiet when people come to the house. Because right. at the end of the day, he'd rather be there, you know, That's as exactly your right. intern. That, uh, that, as my intern. <laughs> as my partner. Because <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. who better to solve a case about people who are missing than people who was who were the person? People. Yeah, I said, yeah. what better way to find a monster than to use a monster's mind mm -hmm. and that and what's great about it is and I think you'll see more and more because it does in that and it's purposely done in a way I think NK did a great job of saying this is a relationship that is so complex very you know even in the first episodes you get to I get to read I don't do too much but people will send me stuff they said well why is she fixing her hair her necklace is she trying to look good for him but no you think about the foundation he spent a year trying to make her perfect. Those things stick with you. Mm -hmm. Any human being who's been, as much as you want to, your parents can do awful, my, I have great parents, but your parents can do awful things to you. Like, I'll never be like them. But then when you get older, you'll see little <laughs> things that'll creep up that's like from your parents. Some things stick with you that have been putting you, and that's sort of where Gabby is. So when she fixes her hair or her necklace to be perfect, it's almost subconscious because it's something that he gave her he put right. in her to be that kind of perfection and gabby always looks perfect on the show by the way hair, hair. clothes yep everything is yep. perfection exactly and that was one of the things when you go to the flashback scenes having the perfect dinner reading the perfect all of those things are something that sir wanted why did he want it i mean i think you really do find the answer more of 
the si- what happens to a sick person's mind, mm-hmm. and that also comes from somewhere too. So that messes with you too, because you don't want to feel for this character, this sir character who did this horrible thing. But you know, horrible people usually have had horrible things happen to them. Right. Okay. I cannot wait to see what happened. What happened to Sir? Because yeah. I am very curious about yeah. his um, whole backstory too. Yeah. And you have a son and a daughter in real life. I do. So when you're doing a show like this, does yeah. that ever like creep into your? Never. Not okay. at all. I am because as a mom, you have to be thinking like bringing that into the acting of like, okay, you know, this is somebody's child. This yeah. is. Yeah, I do, but I try to, I'm very separate and everybody has a different process. Mm-hmm. My process is very, because I am an empath by nature, I just feel energies. That's just what I do. So for work, in order for me to have the mental capacity capacity to just survive in the world, work is very separate for me. Okay. I When I tell you it's separate, they will tell you, you will go from me singing and dancing to action and I'm Gabby Mosley. <laughs> and then when the camera's off, if I'm doing a crying scene, I take the moment to prepare for it, we do it, and then when it's over, we back getting it, getting it, getting it, getting it, getting it, getting it, getting it. because you got to release uh-huh. it. So with my children, I don't ever take work home ever. Okay. All right. No, that's, yeah. I mean, I imagine that has to be something that is like, you know, when people are watching the show, because even when I'm watching it, yeah. there'll be times when I'd be getting a little like, oh, I that's know. so, yeah. It is an emotional thing. Very much. Uh, to be able to watch. So being on set, that has to be emotional at times too, where you got to take a breather. Like, yeah, this was deep. Yeah. 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 And I think that that, and that you want to play, pay, um, you want to make sure that you are honoring those who have gone through any sort of tragedy or suffering. Mm-hmm. So you want to come from a very real place. So it does get hard, especially when you think about those people who are not being, I mean, you look at Ohio right now, there's so many children that are missing mm-hmm. and um, so many families that are hurting, right? extended families. And so you can't help but to feel that just on a human level. Now, there was something that Gabby did that I did not like. Okay, let's talk about it. Okay, because there is a police officer who is... Oh, Lord. Yeah, very helpful. Yes. And he might lose his job because of you. I know. And I kind of felt like you should have, you know, called in and been like, I'm the person. Yeah. I do feel like that. I, mean, I think this that's poor right. man about to lose his damn job. Yeah, you and you ain't even give him none. You know, I know, clearly. not at all. I, not even. Not only did <laughs> not I give him not not a kiss. He can't even. Not even a, kiss, a pinky. You know, you he's walking. Like, he lost his job. Well, he's uh, suspended because of you. You on the couch chatting it up. Yeah, not even a kiss. I, he clearly likes you. Uh, yes. And you just gonna let this man lose his job? Yeah. I mean, I think it's <laughs> tricky because he already took the rap for it. So it's kind of like I. All right. Um, But what's what's funny about that, (laughs) Gabby does, there is a level to Gabby, and this is why I wanted to play her, because it's complex. Every time you have a hero on a show, everybody Mm -hmm. thinks you have to just love them, and they are like, we're on your side, I got your back. But Gabby presents so many beautifully flawed moments that it's like I have to even question our hero. This was yeah. this. That's what's exciting <laughs> about our show. Well, people are mad about that. Oh, of course, they, they're okay. mad about that. I don't know if it was just me, but no, I was of course. Like, All right, now you know you need to make sure that man still has. Yeah, his and and they're mad about that. They're mad when uh, Gabby told him that something is fleeting. What was it? Emotions are fleeting. It was something that he yeah. said and it just <laughs> shut him down. They get mad, honey, and I love it. I yeah, love. You like I love to hear what they mad at Gabby about. So, have, is there season two already um, mapped out? Or well, I know that there. Are is a season two plan in action as far as what NK knows what she wants to do with season two. Mm-hmm. And now we are just waiting for the go. You know, okay. we just got finished with the strike. Everybody know. knows the business is in su- has been in such flux and such a weird position. What I am proud about is that people are talking about it in a real way and they've accepted um, the content in a way that I could never imagine. Right. And we have already begun to close that gap because We've talked about it in mm-hmm. different communities. If you're in underserved communities, about the discrepancies between the, the the, but other people haven't, and now it's on the the lips of other people. Yeah, that has to exciting. be hard because the show did launch during the strike. It did, and so now it's like, okay, we're on episode nine. Yeah, I think now, and I'm just and so talking now to you. You're just, yeah. and I'm just now sitting <laughs> down with you. Now. That's yeah. right, yeah. exactly, <laughs> exactly. So I think we'll, I think we'll hear very soon. Um, I am pretty confident that we're going to do this for season two and many more. Yeah, I can feel it, too, because of the way that I was able to binge watch um, yeah. all of the episodes back to back to back. And then you I know. love a binge. 
<laughs> that's my favorite thing to do. Yeah, and it's hard because I, I remember the days when we used to have to watch a show and then wait for the next week and, you know, set the... Yeah. And, you know, if you had a TiVo, you was lit. Yes! Remember the TiVo? Yes! My husband brought me my first one. Yes. <laughs> what is this? I had an ex-boyfriend. He gave me my first ever TiVo. And it had the Lifetime subscription on it, yes. which is worthless now. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> but now it's like you can just sit down and watch it. What do you prefer? Do you prefer a binge watch? Uh, absolutely. I am okay. instant gratification. Microwave me. Please let you be me mad binge. when it's over. So and you're like, mad. Nah, 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 watch the whole season. And I won't watch. And I generally, I'm not <laughs> recommending this for fan. Go ahead and catch up now on Peacock. Um, <laughs> uh, but I, however, will wait for a full season of something to go if, if that I'm into, like the morning show or, or mm, um, like you show. know, yeah. it, anything that I'm into. I was so happy the other black girl uh, had put all the, the episodes on. Have you seen that? Mm -mm. Oh, it's really good. It's called no. The Other Black Girl. It's really good. I haven't seen it. I know. Uh, oh, you know what? I did see. I, I watched like I think the first episode. I gotta go back and watch. But I was watching that. Yeah, is it? But she so, worked in uh, like an office. And yes, then, but it uh, turns yeah, okay. and twists and degrees and it, anyway. But um, in, but yeah. So I I like to binge okay. and I will wait to binge even on my reality TV shows. All the Real Housewives. I'm a big Bravo nista. Oh, Karen um Huger was just here. Guest oh, hosting well, okay, yesterday Karen from Potomac. Yeah. Do you love her? <laughs> I do. She actually, this was my first time sitting down with her like that, and she guest host. So she was here all the whole show, and she was a good time. Oh, good. I know Giselle wasn't with her because you know they don't get no, down like that. Not, yeah. See, I know. I, I told think, you know, my they're okay now. Oh, they are okay. Yeah, they're okay now. They, I think they have a frenemy <laughs> thing that it goes on, right? And Rob, but Robin and Giselle are always going to be like that. You like watch that. that too. Oh, I you watch know what it all. That's my guilty pleasure is Ninety Day Fiance. <gasps> oh my gosh, I like Married at First Sight and okay. Love is Blind. I like Love is Blind. I haven't watched Married at First Sight, but the other one that's really great is Love After Lockup. <laughs> That's what I need. Where's that? I love after lockup. And I heard about 90 Day Fiance. Yeah, that 90 Day Fiance is amazing. You, It seems like, just from your social media, you still, it's hard, right? But you still like your husband. You know how some oh, people be married for 24 listen. years? Yes. In your pictures, you can see, like, the happiness. Yeah. How was it for you being home, you know, during the strike and, and during right. the pandemic, too, well, and having that time? Yeah, but there's nothing more important than family to me. And being a mom is my first job so even when I was shooting we shoot the show in Atlanta and I live in Los Angeles but even when we were shooting I worked during the week mm -hmm. and I flew home every single weekend for five months okay. to be with my kids. I set out the clothes. I'm very type A. <laughs> set out the clothes for the week, did the washing, did my wifely duties, all the things, okay, <laughs> to make sure that my household was going to still run. So anytime, what's great about being an actor and also what's great about the show that I spent 11 years on, you get a hiatus. Mm. So I spend right. half of my year busting, busting, and then the next time I'm going to stay at home mom, which I really, really enjoy. During the strike was really good because the fall – is the busiest time for kids. Right. So to get them going and started, and I spent, my husband calls my um, <laughs> PFO duties, PTA duties at the school, my full-time job. <laughs> spent like 40 hours a week at this school. It's no problem. <laughs> and are you a sports fanatic too? Oh, gosh, yes. All right, what's your team? Minnesota Vikings. Okay. Football house. <laughs> See, I Let's can tell go. you a good time. Yes. Well, listen, I, oh, and one last thing I want to ask you. From all the characters on the show, on Found, mm. right? Um, besides Lacey, because clearly y'all have a certain bond, uh, as the just as the characters on the show, not in real life. You yeah, know, I love her in the real scenes. life too. Yeah, but, but um, as the characters on the show, who would you say um, of all, all the people that she works with is the one that she's most connected to? Gabby's character. Do we, what would you guess by looking? Can you kind of um, tell? I, I'll answer, but I'm just wondering if you can feel. You know who I feel the most for? Um, the one. What is her name? Margaret. Yes. The bus station. Oh, my God. That's heart. Yeah. Now, that is heartbreaking. Yeah. I'm going to tell you the one part where I got a little teary eyed was mm. when I was like, when she was trying to find out, you know, who took the she. So just for people listening, if you haven't seen it and you definitely should make sure you watch it and mm. binge watch it because uh, you can still catch up before the season ends and we can right. talk about it together. Yes. Um, but she has the the rip off, you know, missing and Put it at the, the phone bell. number and somebody ripped off the tag. Yes. And she goes to the bus stop every day. So she can't even go on certain missions because she needs to be close so she can go to the bus stop. And somebody ripped off, you know, the phone number and she's just who ripped it off and y'all yeah. was going through the footage. Yeah. And then it turned out that they just ripped it off to uh, wrap their gum in. When I tell you I was 
I felt I, so. I know awful. she. she yeah. But Gabby has a connection to all of those characters. That's why she. They are a part of the team. They've all. She been. said that they've all been had something mm -hmm. happen to them in their lives. That's right. And that's the other great central theme of this of the show is that tragedy does not discriminate. It doesn't say it's going to hit a certain color mm -hmm. or an age or gender. It's everybody experiences tragedy and healing can look a lot of different ways. So we shouldn't judge how each other's healing process is. So the connection for Gabby, the character I play, is with all of them. But the one that I think gets her, mm -hmm. for to answer that question, would be Dawn. Okay, okay. All right, tell me why. I think you'll start to see more and more. I think Dawn's real ability to not judge um, will reveal itself in, in other things. Well, I don't want to spoil it because okay, you're about okay. to see, but okay. you'll see Do why I said die. Okay. You'll see why. And you can kind of, you if and once you see what ended up happening, you'll go back and watch the season and you'll see glimpses of it and you'll be like, oh, oh <laughs> when they did the thing that was the thing. Oh my gosh. So yeah. Well, listen, you guys, thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. You guys got to watch Found. You know, honestly, we're, you got time. Yeah. You got time to catch up before the season ends, and we definitely want a season two. So let's make okay. sure that is, you know, solid. Thank but you. Shanola Hampton, for you as an individual, I appreciate you for coming here with all the energy that you came in here with. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, just thank you. I Amazing. appreciate you, boss. Amazing. You're doing a lot of things, and I'm so proud, and I'm happy to be in your presence. And thank you for having me. Truly, truly, yeah, truly, like you doing <laughs> really, really big things. And I think that you are such an example of what can be and what should be. And so I'm really, really, really honored to be here. And I'm so honored. You. This is amazing for me. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Again, I'm going to tell you some more things off air about the show that I feel mm -hmm. like is um, politically incorrect for me to say. Yeah, you know, let's not get in trouble today. One more thing. All right. It's <laughs> <way up. laughs>